This podcast is sponsored by Vicon, the Academy Award-winning developer of motion capture products and services for the life science, entertainment, and engineering industries. Shogun, Vicon's visual effects software, developed specifically for the needs of the VFX community, captures performances effortlessly, in real time, and delivers robust, accurate, reliable data. The latest release of Shogun now includes full range of motion, high-fidelity finger capture, along with other massive quality-of-life improvements, so you can capture reality faster. Find out more at www.vicon.com. Oh, hello, Internet. This is Troy Baker, and I'm here with your lovely, very, very British host, Victoria Atkin. And this is the Performance Capture Podcast. The fact that I get to bridge this weird world between performer and, but like, fangirl first, let's be real, is so dope. I kind of created my position. Like, nobody said, oh, you know, here, go to school to become a performance capture producer. I pretty much created my own career. If there's something that, that you're curious about or if you have any questions, like, go out and find the answers for yourself. What I think I love the best about it is just its family environment. You know, the dots can tell if you're lying. Hi, you're listening to the Performance Capture Podcast with me, Victoria Atkin. And today, my guest, well... I didn't really even need to announce this man. I'm sure everybody in the performance capture industry knows exactly who he is. Can you please tell us your name and where you grew up? (laughs) I was not prepared for that. Uh, The man who needs no introduction. Please introduce yourself. Uh, My name is Troy Baker. Uh, Where did I grow up? Boy, that's an interesting question because I was born in Dallas, Texas. I spent the majority of my life there, but... I feel like I grew up more here in LA. Like I feel like I've I've grown more into who I am in the last thirteen years in in, in Los Angeles, as you would say. So, but the accent, where is that molded? Well, fixing is the absolute. The, the that is like the quintessential Texas word. I'm fixing to leave. I'm fixing to get ready. I'm fixing to fight you. Um, <laughs> and it's just it's the about to um, translation for people who are from Texas, but. I had to get rid of, I even said get, I had to get rid of uh, certain words because I would say get, I would get rid of something. Uh, 10 and 10 were the same thing, whether it's the material or the number, pin and pen. I had to get rid of words like that. The hardest word for me to say, and people used to bust me on it all the time for some reason, was ancient. I used to say ain't. No, ancient? Ancient. So I used to say, <laughs> I was, I, like, I, I, I was messing myself say? up. I used to say ancient. Oh, okay. And someone was like, what? It was like, it's, it's, the word is ancient. I was like, ancient, ancient. And they're like, here's what you think. You look at someone that's old, and you're like, I'm not going to buy that because, because it ain't shit. <laughs> it ain't shit. I was like, oh, there it is. So yeah, you had to get rid of that diphthong because unless they were hiring somebody. And I've, I've been able to play people from Texas. Um, the, one of the, the most, popular roles that I've had is, is playing Joel from The Last of Us. And I don't remember if if on the casting sides I could go back and look um, if it ever said that he was from Texas or if I just kind of saw the guy and that's that's what I just... Mm. I remember that that being the case as I just looked at him and was like, this is that guy. And he just it kind of had that Texas thing. And I feel like they later said it was from Austin, but I, I could have been wrong. No. Um, somebody on the internet is just freaking out right now, either correcting me or, or applauding <laughs> me. Um, but yeah, you, you, you have to kind of, that's the business of doing this. You know, you have to be able to, to morph into characters that might not necessarily have the same background that you do. And, uh, we always ask everybody what their profession is. I feel like we don't really need to ask you, but you need to tell us anyway for other people that may not have ever heard of who Troy Baker is. I'm not sure who that is that's listening to this, but. Your professional title is? Storyteller. I like that. Storyteller. Okay. Um, tell stories any way that I can. Sometimes it's in a booth like we're in right now. Sometimes it's on a mocap stage, PCAP stage. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's on uh, a live stage. Sometimes it's it's just me. I'm trying to tell a story. That's all I'm trying to do. And through music too. Yeah. I started off in music. Oh, and really? um, I thought that's how I was going to leave my fingerprint. Nope. Um, Whoever thinks that they're going to leave their fingerprint with performance capture, I had no, no idea what that nobody. was when I was a kid. Like, I think we're finally experiencing this, like, the, this whole generation, this resurgence of people that are like, um, how do I get into this? I'm like, 
Five years ago, that was not even a question. That was not a sentence that a no. sane person would ever say. We just spoke to somebody, um, one of the other guests, Katie Lydon. Uh, she did her degree in games design, which when I was younger, there wasn't even an option at university. There wasn't a, no. a course. So it's really exciting. So we always ask everybody on this show how you would best describe what performance capture is because mm. it seems to be a minefield, but I always like to hear how you would describe that. I think my wife actually came up with the best like aphorism for it. It's stage on film. Mm. It is a theater type setting that allows you the freedom to be able to give a cinematic performance. I just, I just got back from New York um, and I, I love catching a show there. I love catching a show in the West End, honestly, it's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. Like right now, Sir Ian McKellen is spending his 111th birthday, whatever it is, <laughs> by doing a, a, a live a show. It's like show. a one-man show. Yeah. Um, and the it's a completely different kind of uh, environment when you're doing, you know this, when you're doing theater, because there's that haptic feedback from the audience that you're getting that's changing dynamically every night, every show. But there's a certain level of performance you have to give if you're doing a show in the thrust that, that you have to sell it to the cheap seats and make sure that they understand all the nuances in, of your performance and your character. But film gives us the ability to really do something that's small, subtle, and nuanced, trusting that they're going to have the right lens on you and be able to tell that. But in order to do that, there's all of this encumbrance that surrounds you you have to make sure, oh, don't, you're turning your head too far to the left and you're falling out of focus. We need you to stay right here. And that's that one shot. Okay, now give us an hour and a half and we're going to completely break this set down and relight everything and change our cameras. And now we're going to do the other side of this conversation. Um, whereas theater, you can, you can do the entire scene in one take if you want to. Mm -hmm. And so it's the ability to have that kind of freedom to move around in this space, this black box theater to where you walk into most stages are... It's like Stanley Kubrick just wanted to die in these rooms because they're all white and padded. Padded and, cell. And they, <laughs> <laughs> the cell. And they're surrounded by um, like the Vicon cameras that are on these grid systems everywhere. Um, and as technology gets better and better, the number of cameras gets fewer and fewer. Mm -hmm. um, and you're wearing this ridiculous costume. Bill Nighy was... Um, <laughs> and he's with Pirates of the Caribbean. I think it was Pirates, yeah. and they were like, he's like, I'm not, they, they handed him his mocap suit. He was like, I won't wear that. My character would never wear that. And they're like, <laughs> you're not wrong. However, <laughs> you're incredibly wrong because you will wear this uh, because this is what your character needs you to wear. What I love about this is that for me as an actor, it's very easy for me to get lost in the trappings of a performance. And I believe if someone said, what, what, what is your process, which I don't really have one, but I do have a motto or a credence that I live by, which is never be rehearsed, always be prepared. I think there's a lot of people that know, okay, on this line, I'm going to stand up. Mm -hmm. And on this word, I'm going to take my glasses off to really prove a point or put the cigarette out on at the you know, end of this line, whatever. And that to me is being rehearsed as opposed to, well, what if you don't have a pack of cigarettes? What if they actually take your glasses away? What if there's no chair for you to sit in? Mm -hmm. um, if you're prepared, then your character can move around in that space and say those lines without the necessitation of that action. And the great thing about performance capture is that we don't have, like with TV and film, continuity issues right. at all. Doesn't I mean, matter. it's it's not, you can do a different take as long as the director's says we're going to you know do what you need to do for the next take it doesn't have to match no. anything they can cut between things and yeah that's that's a nice thing that we don't have continuity issues we don't have framing issues it's such a great space to just play yeah there's some things that i found we were doing shadow of mordor and the director christian contemessa who had a great history both within games and within film he's a filmmaker but he also worked within games so he understood the language of both and he was wanting to shoot his cameras as we were shooting, much to the frustration of the first AD, who was there on the stage going, you're, you're really limiting yourself because here's all of this freedom that Bob Zemeckis was so famous of saying when he did the first Beowulf. He was like, I just shot in one hour what it would have taken me a week to shoot. Mm -hmm. Just the full setup. And we were able to shoot. He was like, oh my God, I can't believe what we we're able to do because of the freedom, because everything will be done in post. Right now, I just need to get the performances. And Christian turned to him and said, if I can't shoot it now, what makes you think I can shoot it later? And sure, if you have two actors that are 
you know, the term is stacked. So like if my camera is looking right here and the way that these two actors are positioned, I can move you guys in post. However, let's try to get it now. So I think there's this marriage and we're finding different developers as we progress through this technology and as we see what works and what doesn't work. And that's predominantly done by what resonates within the audience. We're finding that's, that it is a marriage. It's not a an annulment. It's not a... a, a an ignoring of processes. I think too many people went so far to the other end of the spectrum. It's like, we don't have to do anything that applies to film. Yeah. It's like, well, no, there's some film tenements works that we for should, a reason. Right. And, there's some things we that work. We want to get the performances that they have on films in this medium. This brings me to another um, question. Uh, you talked about The Last of Us, which is a phenomenal game and incredible performances. How did you discover performance capture? Was that the first gig that you did in performance capture? or No. And how uh, did you get into it? Because I know I was talking about my experience. I totally stumbled into yeah. this. I was doing on-camera things, and then this performance capture opportunity arose, and I learned on the job at Assassin's Creed. But sure. how did you... What, what was your first experience? I lied. I lied. Oh, yeah? <laughs> um, yeah, I... <laughs> I, I I was I've always been a gamer. Like I'm I'm, I'm like on my fifteenth console generation. Um, I, I've I've grown up on everything from ColecoVision, Atari, um, oh, wow. PC, um, big you know five and a half inch you know floppy disks to where we are now, which is about to welcome a whole new generation of of consoles uh, and platforms. So I've been in this industry long enough that I, I'm savvy and I'm hip and I can speak a little bit of the... It's like my French. I know enough French to get me lost in Paris or to get me really, really confused talking but to But not someone. enough to get you home. But not enough to get me home. <laughs> That's the rush of that <laughs> phrase. Yes. Oh, man, I'm going to steal that. That's amazing. Um, and so I, I have no idea. I think a guy who I'd worked with on some gig, just a VO gig, was like, hey, they're casting for this game. Uh, and it was like, oh, that's, that's like a real audition, and it's on camera. I was like, cool. And I walked in, and there are, uh, it's 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 a literal kennel of of people. They're just like, there's like 150 people there, and they're moving so slow. Oh wow, like an open audition for it was a an video open game? casting call. Wow. And uh, there's a lot of stunt people that are there. I think my time was at 10 o'clock or whatever, and it's getting on to like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Oh, wow. And they're like, it's going to be a, a while. It's like, it's already been a while. I've been, we've been here almost all day. I was just about to leave, and I was standing up, and they called my name, and I walked in, and I was like, all right, this can't be for nothing. And I walked in, and it was a Japanese game. I didn't know this at the time, but just from a um, propriety sense, you don't, you don't use your hands really in anything in Japanese culture. You don't shake hands, you don't touch doors, you don't do anything. <laughs> and I went down the list and I took the opportunity to shake the hand of everybody <laughs> on there. And I was like, how can I? And I just, being a performer, I just, you know, went straight into performance mode. And the audition scene was like a death scene. And so I just, I, I swung for the fences. And I thought that I gave an amazing performance. And <laughs> I left. I found out later that Tom turned to the entire panel of gobsmacked Japanese and said, I can control him. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me a shot. And so my first PCAP gig um, was in Japan. And we oh, lived wow. in Tokyo for three weeks working on a game that never came out. Okay. And I learned a lot. And then my, I think my second gig was actually back in Japan for another game. Um, and then I did, there's been a bunch of them, but I, I want to make sure I get the timeline right. But I did Resident Evil. Oh, wow. I think that was the next one that I, that I did, Resident Evil 6. And we shot the entire thing as if it was a movie. Full hair, makeup, wardrobe, sets, cameras, music, effects, as what they call, quote, visual storyboards. And we shot for, I think, three weeks just so they could assemble it together and go, okay, this is kind of what our game was going to look like. Okay, now we'll actually go back. And we shot it twice. Oh, my goodness. And I was the only one that made it through all the way from that shoot to the actual performance capture to the face to the VO because oh they did all goodness. of them separately. Yeah. Um, weird gig. Super weird gig. And this, what what, what year would this be? 2010, maybe? How no, far it has come in 10 right, years. Yeah. Well, look, I don't think that was anybody's process. And they even said we want to do it the Naughty Dog way. Because at that point, okay. Uncharted, the first Uncharted, second Uncharted had come out. They were working on the third. 
I actually auditioned for, I left set, I auditioned for Golden Abyss in, in full like wardrobe. And I just came in like, I had a scar on my face and everything. And I, I, that was the, I think it was the <laughs> first it. time that I auditioned with Nolan North. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was, it was a fun audition. But then I, I, I moved forward and I got to do, um, we worked on The Last of Us and we shot that for two and a half years. And then uh, Infamous Second Son, we did Shadow of uh, Mordor, Shadow of War. Yeah, and Shadow of War, I, I, did, the vo- I did some voices for that. I didn't yeah, realize did. there was so much uh, performance capture. That's really cool. We, we did two shoots, and it was the one time, besides Resident Evil, that we did everything in one fell swoop. Yeah. Um, and it felt like more like being on set. Like, that. this is my job for the next month is yeah. I'm going to come to set five days a week. And isn't it great? We were talking, Elias Tufex and I were talking about how great it is and you have kids too, um, that it's, you can do a nine to five with performance yeah. capture. You don't have night shoots. Yeah. You can be home for bedtime and even tea time, you yeah. know, um, it's such a, it's such a great thing. And there's generally not much overtime or those, no. those things. It, even it really like runs very to, smoothly. Like TV and film is like, you know, 12, 14 hour days and you start mm-hmm. getting into French hours and you start getting into overtime and then you go six day weeks if you're on the indie and it's mm-hmm. all of this stuff. It's like, no man, this is a really, it's a really good gig because not only are you doing eight hour days, the only thing that matters is the scene. And it's, it's so, the distillation of just the performance and being able to, I remember in The Last of Us, there's one of our favorite scenes. Uh, it's called the ranch house scene. It's Ellie, the, the character of Ellie is run away. And Tommy uh, and Joel go to look for her and they find her in this abandoned house. And there's this beautiful scene where she's basically looking around and she's going through a, a girl's diary. And she's like, are these the things that they used to worry about? Because she has no knowledge of the life before this. So the, the world that existed before this, this huge traumatic event. And we worked on this scene the whole of the morning and anybody else would have taken the third take probably. And so we're good. We're moving on, checking the gate, moving on. And we went on to the next scene because we had a day to make and we had other scenes that were lined up to do. And we all looked at, we're like, it's good, but we haven't broken the scene yet. And we took a break and we came back like a 10 minute break. We came back. There's this moment in the scene where Ashley's character, Ellie, she looks at me and she says, everyone that I've ever cared about has, has left me, everybody. And she pushed me because I wasn't looking at her. And at this moment happened, I'm like, she brought me into the scene by this in com- completely spontaneous action that was so rooted in her character, this petulant moment of listen to me. Mm-hmm. And that's the scene that stayed in the game. And we never would have been able to get there if we had not had the freedom to be able to really explore that scene. And you just don't get that in film. And you also don't just get that, even if you have two people in a booth that no. are just you know, behind a mic. We can, you and I can crack a scene and we can do something that's really, really cool in this setting. But there's something different when we're able to walk around and move and react in real time to each other. Yeah, the, the body informs the voice, informs yeah. the face, informs everything. And then yeah. that's amazing. I was going to ask you about an experience that you enjoyed on the motion capture stage, but that was so beautifully put. That, 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 that's going to be <laughs> your answer to that question. Yeah. A couple of last questions here. Your favorite thing about motion capture. I mean, you really have done a lot of this work now. And as an actor in, I would say, at the top of your game right now, what, what is your favorite thing? Why do you love getting up and doing this as a living? Man, it's so I, answering favorite questions are always the biggest challenge for me. I always liked multiple choice more than I like true and false on tests. <laughs> the thing that this process has taught me, the amount of humbling, because you walk out there and it's, you're, you're naked. I remember talking to a friend of mine who said, um, he was on this movie and he was like, I don't feel like my character, but then I get in that makeup chair and they put the wig on me and they put the scar on my face and then I get into wardrobe and I've got my sword and then I walk out then I'm my character. I'm like, mm-hmm. cool. Let me talk to you about my process of those <laughs> same things. Me going through the works is putting on a spandex leotard suit that shows every flaw mm-hmm. and then lying back on a table while somebody puts 16 dots on my face 
Um, and then they fit me with a helmet that is a camera suspended eight inches away from my nose. And then I have to go and deliver this incredibly mm-hmm. emotional scene. It forces you, because all of the things that normally, inf- like you said, inform you about your character, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the sets, the props, are vacant. And they're actually those things are now a hindrance to your performance. And it forces you to not worry about how I look or acting. It's just everything has to disappear. And you are left alone in the vacuum of your character. And what is at stake in the scene? And it is one of the most hindering and liberating forms uh, of acting. And I've been incredibly, incredibly grateful for the opportunities that people have given me because there's no way you're going to cast me as Joel in a movie. There's no way you're going to cast me as Talion in the movie. You're not. You're going to get Viggo Mortensen. Mm-hmm. You're going to get Josh Brolin. You're going to get those people that you look at the character, you look at them and go, 100% I buy that. Mm-hmm. But there is something that I understood about those characters that nobody else did that didn't make me better, just made me different that those directors and those creatives looked at and said, we're willing to give him a shot because I was able to embody that character as a partnership with those creatives, trusting that what they were going to do from a character design standpoint and from a game design standpoint, um, that it was a partnership with them. It wasn't just me alone out there. I was walking onto that stage with a team of people that all they cared about was that that character was good in that game. Mm-hmm. And the essence of, of things, I yeah. found that the characters that I've played might not have, I looks-wise, would not have been cast, but the essence that I have, the energy that I have, mm-hmm. that we're, when we're animating these souls, yeah, I think it's the only way that actually captures the essence of a soul, yeah, um, which I love. Um, anyway, that was incredible. I, I really enjoyed your answer for that. And it's it's great to see your work just continue to expand and and i love how how much you honor and appreciate the collaborative process because as actors i mean we are just a tiny little blip really are. in in this um we get a lot of credit for what we do but really it's such a collaborative process that we couldn't even do anything with anybody without the rest of the teams on board to bring these characters to life. Which is far more comforting to know that when you walk out there, you've got a team of people behind you and that it's not all on you. Yeah. And that goes for directors as well. Mm -hmm. It's not all on the director to make this happen. There's a team of people, there's a group of animators, there's a group of level designers, there's a group of shaders, there's a group of lighting people, there's a group of QA people that are going to be back there. All they care about is that this thing resonates with an audience. And at the end of the day, Everybody that is either on that stage or in that office is just trying to tell the same story. What advice would you give other people listening that Mm. want to get into a similar field of performance capture? Maybe there's some actors out there or gamers out there that, oh, one of my biggest goals is to be an actor in a game. Yeah. Um, Where do they get started? Like, how does, what would you advise? The beauty is, is that everybody's, Your story is different than mine of how we got into this, but the one common denominator is that everybody kind of stumbled into this. Mm -hmm. um, And they did so because we were brave enough to fail. We were brave enough to to take a chance and go on that audition, which we can get into. There's a whole other conversation about no longer calling them auditions. You're not trying out for the role of something. You're going to show them what the role looks like. I almost walked out of that first audition for that game in in Japan, and I almost walked out of the audition for The Last of Us because I allowed my ego and my fear, my insecurities to get the better of me that became a higher and a a louder narrative than the truth that I understood about the character. And I literally had my hand on the door and was about to open and walk out when they called my name. And that game changed my life. And I, I almost missed out of all those opportunities. I almost missed out of the opportunity to sit here and talk to you about it because of fear. It's so funny that you say that. that I, I denied the first audition for Evie for I, in Assassin's Creed. I said, I'm not going to do it. Oh, my God. And I, I said, I'm not, I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna to audition for this video game. I've been on TV. Like, what is this? You know, I was so unaware. I was so... But I also do believe what's for us won't pass us by. 
mm. you know what somehow it's going to come for some in the reason face. i mean my manager thank god at the time she was like Victoria, can you please do this you know how you have this goal to be an action heroine like this is the new lara croft type thing yeah. can you do this i was like but i don't know what performance capture i mean nobody knows what that is like what is you know and it's the forefront and it is that bravery we had guests on season one say that this is new. We're pioneers yeah, right now. 100%. And to be a pioneer in this field, you got to step into the unknown. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely a huge, shiny example of that. And I'm, I'm very grateful to be sitting here talking to you. And, and I'm glad that you took those opportunities and your name was called at that right time. Me too. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. I mean, I feel like I could talk to you for hours about oh, this. Yeah. And I very much hope that we've been in a number of games, but not actually worked together. So we one day we're going to be on the stage. I'm yeah. going to put that out there now. Um, but how can we find you on social media? How can we follow what you're up to? Um, it's always good to follow me. And normally it's funny because we started this um, YouTube channel, Nolan North and I did. And so we do each other's. So like you can, I, I tell him you can follow Nolan at, and I give his oh, and he okay. gives mine. And so it feels weird for me to say mine. Do you want to do each other's, mine and yours? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can follow my dear friend, Victoria Atkin at. Um, Mine's just Victoria Atkin. <laughs> see, I was not, I, I got the Twitters is uh, Troy Baker, V like Victor, A like Alpha, uh, Troy Baker, VA. And uh, Instagram is um, official Troy Baker. Look for the blue tick. That's all I say. And we've got some gifts for you from Vicon. You do? Hey, we thanks, have Vicon. Some Vicon sunglasses. Okay. There we go. You can use them. The we have the a really nice Vicon notepad here. Th this is a great, this, th this little thing is perfect. Um, anybody listening, I would highly recommend you just kind of keep a notepad, paper, or whatever, because if you're creative and you're trying to tap into that whole other level of creative that happens when we're just in that in between stage right you have yeah. a dream you're like oh my god they make a great game a great song a great tv show a great book whatever don't just expect you to uh yourself or your mind to remember that until the next morning have a piece of paper have a pad of paper and a pen next to you and just write it down um if nothing else it just chronicles your dreams it's a really cool thing that's cool and then this is their their event calendar and brochure Ooh. so you get to read that oh, there we right. go so thank you so much, Mr. Troy Baker, for coming and speaking to us on the Performance Capture podcast. It has been absolute pleasure and delight. Thank you for your time today. Um, we are very, very grateful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. This recording was done by Formosa Interactive, a full-service post-production sound company. Among its many divisions, Formosa Group as a whole offers independent and AAA content creators end-to-end -end services, including voiceover, sound supervision, sound design, editorial, mixing and music for gaming, film, broadcast, and other platforms. Visit www.formosagroup.com for more information. Thank you to Soundbox LA for editing this episode.